here. So not impossible to get some form of a short-term pump up here. What I would rather see happen is I would rather see price kind of break Hello guys, today our guests are world famous crypto, Bitcoin traders and investors, as well as the owners of the biggest crypto YouTube channel, BitBoy Crypto, actual name Ben Armstrong, and Frankie Candles, who in this video talks about the potential storm coming into the Bitcoin price action and other important financial and crypto news. Bitcoin BTC $22,284 would need to return below $20,000 to reset a key metric that covers speculative profit-taking, data shows. In the latest edition of its weekly newsletter, the week on chain, analytics firm Glassnode revealed that short-term holders, SDS, might be dictating BTC price resistance. As BTC slash USD climbed toward $25,000 STAs, those holding coins for 155 days or less, began seeing substanti. This was captured by the market value to realized value MVRV metric, which compares the Bitcoin market cap to the value of coins moved on chain. By comparing these two metrics, MVRV can be used to get a sense of when the price is above or below fair value and to assess market profitability, Glassnode explains in an accompanying guide. MVRV passed 1.2 on the way to multi-month highs, coinciding with $23,800, appearing as an area of BTC price resistance. As Glassnode writes, the possibility of STAs taking profits tends to grow during periods where the average SDA is 20% plus in money, returning a 8 MVRV above 1.2. The recent rejection at the $23,800 level resonates with this structure, as the STH aim in VRV hit a value of 1.2 before stalling, it continued this week. Should the market return to $19,300, it would bring C8 MVRV back to the value of 1.0 and indicate that spot prices have returned to the cost basis of this cohort of new buyers. Here's the long and short of what we were doing, creating a seven member board that goes up underneath the CFTC. What I would like to have done is have two CFTC members, two legal scholars, maybe John Deaton could have been one, could have swung it our way, you know, and then three leaders from the crypto asset space. So this is one of several documents that we sent to Sam and we sent to Brett Harrison um, back in August, okay? So now that you see what we are, we were slash are trying to do in some form, you understand why Sam went to go get on the DCCPA and try to make sure that he was in control of the regulation because it was about to come out of his hands. What we were doing is a fair way for crypto to be represented. And I, I think that, you know, one of the really interesting things here is that, um, Sam wanted to control everything for the industries. And even looking at this, we would want to make sure that the industry didn't take over the board. And people would say this. They say, oh, you know, well, and also, by the way, the plan would have been for this to go up from the CFTC to its own commission down the road. And people will say, well, it'll be corrupt. It'll be corrupt. That, that's crazy. Um, because look at the SEC, look at the CFTC, blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, that's fine. If it does become a corrupt organization down the road or a corrupt committee, or commission, then that's fine. Because during the next five to 10 years, we would have laid out all the groundwork of, for crypto, digital assets before they were able to take it from us, okay? So that's that was the goal of the bill. Now, what has happened since then, okay? Since we had this bill and we paid the money, we're ready to make it public, we learned like we should slow down with it because uh, there's something coming, okay? So the thing that is coming is the stablecoin bill. And I got a lot of great questions, by the way, um, on my Twitter thread about that the other TJ, uh, yeah. the other day, TJ, for that survey. That. I'm going to try to put that uh, together today. Not sure about Columbus, Ohio yet, DeFi fate, but we will, I'll, I'll let you guys know probably in the next uh, one to two weeks when that'll be. But the point is, is that, um, where I lost my train of thought. What did I just say to you? Uh, you said a great, great comments on the, so right. They, oh, the, the stablecoin bill is coming first. So that will probably be released in the next, uh, I'm guessing, month. 
and it'll probably take all year to pass. What does this mean for our bill? This means there's no reason for us to pursue it right now until the stablecoin ban or stablecoin bill, excuse me, is is through and is passed. So what does that mean? Does that mean we give up? No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, here's the really cool thing. Uh, and plus, like, I'm sharing you, we could still go this route, but I'm sharing this with you guys today because we're changing what we're doing. We're going to change. The, I wanted to make this public and show you guys what we were doing because we talked about it for so long, so long, so long. Uh, one of the cool things we want to do is we want to make it where we, we could have a DAO that would choose the high-level crypto people making sure that retail was represented as well, along with maybe someone from an exchange and someone from, I don't know, maybe Web3, something like that. Uh, now, we do have some potential bearish signs popping up on the higher time frames. However, it's not one of those like alarming, uh, you know, panic kind of bearish signals. It's kind of just like a general uh, signal that could indicate some more consolidation or uh, more moves to the downside. Uh, but again, not this emergency warning, big bearish signal flashing, or uh, at least not just yet. Uh, so I do want to take a look at some things. We're going to take a look at the two main key levels I am looking at um, and the level that we need to hold to maintain uh, maintain our longer term bullish sentiment. As you guys know, I am leaning a little bit more bullish long term um, until we start breaking bullish market structure on the higher time frame. So I want to show you guys that key level that we're watching, um, as well as some other key levels that we're keeping an eye on. We'll take a look at that bearish signal on the higher time frames, and then I'm going to talk about why I think we could potentially get a little bit of a pump here. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in here. Uh, make sure I'm on the right chart. I am. Um, so first off, let me just go ahead and hide all this TA and just talk really quick about the weekly. Now, we are now printing this red dot on the weekly. And again, shout out. I see all the candles in chat. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, but uh, we do have the weekly red dot printing. Again, not like the most, war you know, not warning, oh my God, we're going to zero type thing, um, but could indicate just some more potential, uh, you know, uh, on the weekly. Into the mic. Which hour? On the uh, weekly. The weekly. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do have that weekly red dot printing. So it could indicate, you know, maybe a little bit more of a move down, or it could actually, if this pump is going to be for real, and this is going to be the start of a bigger move up again to that uh, potential 28 to 30K target, uh, we may just kind of see that wind up being some kind of uh, consolidation rather than some kind of a move down. Um, but I just wanted to cover that because it's something you just have to keep your eye on, right? Um, but coming down to the daily, guys, this is more of the bullish case here. Uh, I do want to go ahead and uh, just kind of look at this for a second. We do, uh, if we turn on the BitLab, uh, the BitLab trading stack here, you guys can see we are getting a bullish divergence here on the daily. And if you watch my channel and you look at these bullish divergences, you might be thinking like, well, hey, this doesn't really look like a regular divergence. And that is because it's a hidden divergence. Um, so uh, this is, and, and that's basically, guys, where you have higher lows on your price action with your lower lows on your oscillator. Um, and I'll pull up the other indicators in a second, but you could just see that with the market intelligence indicator. We just kind of get that flag up here saying, hey, there's a hidden bull div right here. You don't even have to check your other indicators, uh, but you do get that little indication here. Also, on top of that, guys, we also do have the relative extrema bars coming all the way out of this green wave. This would also indicate a potential reversal to the upside. And then not quite this there just yet, but that significant movement indicator um, is looking like it may start to print a bit of a blue wave here, again, showing some kind of a temporary bottom. Um, basically, guys, kind of how I am looking at things right now, again, keeping it very, very simple, um, just kind of zooming out and taking a look at that volume profile range. And uh, right now, this macro profile does come in with the value area high coming in again at about 25K. This has basically been the same for quite some time since we've rejected these highs. Uh, and then your value area low is coming in right here at about 21.9. So, one thing you want to remember here, we have that weekly. Uh, shout out to uh, uh, Anecdotal Smith says, bought my Frankie Candle shirt and beanie. Let's go. Shout out to you, bro. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, I hope you like it. Um, but uh, just kind of looking here, we are technically at the lows of the range here, right? So this is not the best place to, you know, see a weekly red dot and be like, oh my God, this is the time, uh, you know, to just completely flip bearish. Uh, you want to understand we are at the lows of the range, right? So I would expect some potential support here, especially with that hidden bull div forming on the daily time frame. And another thing you want to realize, guys, is that we also have this confirmed uh, bullish divergence on the four-hour time frame. Now, it hasn't really given us anything 
anything up until this point. Um, but you, And it is somewhat of a uh, weaker divergence. You could kind of consider this with equal bottoms uh, on your oscillator here. Uh, but it is still technically a bullish divergence. So we did technically confirm a bull div on the four hour here. So not impossible to get some form of a short-term pump up here. What I would rather see happen is I would rather see price kind of break down from here and actually come down and test uh, these levels down here in this blue box that I'll give you the levels for in a second. Um, but if we get that and we get our momentum wave to come down a little bit here and get a little bit of a cleaner bull div on the four hour, this if we are able to get this to happen with that hidden bull div on the daily, that's where I think would be this would be a very, very good place to be looking for a long, potentially actually riding all the way up to that 25K value area high, right? So we have the weekly red dot, which is bearish, but we want to understand we're at the bottom of our range. So you don't want to get overly bearish at support. Um, and again, because of that hidden bull div uh, on the daily and that four hour confirmed bullish divergence, not impossible to pump here. But again, I would rather see price take one more drop into this blue box before printing another four-hour bull div to get that bigger move up. And then again, guys, just looking at this as a range. I know there's other levels here, but at the end of the day, really all you're looking at is the volume profile, the value area high, and the value area low. This helps give you context into the market you're at, right? You don't want to short at support. And these, va these value areas really help you um, kind of see what the context of the market is, right? Are you at a major important level of support, or are you kind of at a level of resistance where that weekly red dot can bring you down more? So as of right now, the big bearish, you know, the 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 one bearish signal here really is that weekly red dot. But again, on the lower time frames, I do think we can see a, a potential move up before we see that movement to the downside. Because again, those higher time frames do take a little longer to play out. So um, I am feeling a little bit pumpy in the medium to short term, but keeping an eye on that weekly red dot for a potential push down, um, maybe after that pump. Um, but these are the key levels I'm watching, guys. And then this blue box, which again, if we do get a move down, would be the major level of support I am looking at is coming in between about $21,897 and $21,387. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of BitBoy Crypto and Frankie Candles. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.